it's Shamini and I am covering the Singapore Grand Prix on the perspective of the Salbok Formula 1 team. I make videos on my channel as well which is youtube.com slash vlogs. I cover every single session from the Formula 1 Grand Prix calendar and uh, you can follow me there as well if you want. I would like to know what you guys thought of the Singapore Grand Prix. Let me know in the comments section below. I felt like this was a race to forget for the Salba team. I was hoping for points and really praying for points because uh, last year in Singapore, I believe Esteban got into Q3 and of course closing into Japan, he was able to get his first ever points. Now we are in the part of the season where the next race is going to be Japan and so my main thought at this very point in time is that Japan is going to hopefully be much better for the team than uh, any other race so far because I think that there's still so much more to fight for and I also think that Japan has been very very in the last couple of years Japan has been a really good standout race for the team because from my knowledge uh, this is where Esteban got his first points in Japan and also I'm talking a lot about Japan right now um, but also Kamui Kobayashi was on the podium in Japan and I know those cars were very different. In terms of Friday, Esteban Gutierrez lost a little bit of time because they had a bit of a problem with his power unit in the car and also he did say that there was a little bit of aero progress that was being made but Singapore isn't really a track that is very very important for aerodynamics. In terms of Adrian Sutil, he also had um, issues with the power unit um, because they couldn't actually charge the battery properly in the car. If I get on to qualifying, Esteban of course qualified P14, so he did get into Q2, um, however he was knocked out of uh, getting into Q3. He said that he actually got a lot more than expected out of the car, which is a bit surprising. In free practice 3 he was P10, which was a really really good achievement, and that uh, time I believe was set on the super soft. And in terms of qualifying, it's um, kind of sad when you hear a driver say that they got more than they expected when they qualified P14. Adrian, on the other hand, was P17, and he said that, he said the complete opposite thing. He actually said that quality was not as good as expected, and there are still problems um, in terms of the energy management, which was one of the main problems throughout the weekend that Manisha Kaltabon also highlighted. So still, there are so many mechanical problems affecting the team and it is one of the biggest I think reasons why they maybe aren't qualifying as well or even doing as well in the race because there are so many mechanical failures or problems. In terms of the race as I mentioned it really was one to forget there was a double retirement which is not something any team wants they want to at least finish the race and if they do finish the race then they want to at least finish in the points and if they finish in the point you know you just want more and more and more but unfortunately they had to have a double retirement um, and you, of course if you guys watched the race you probably saw Esteban was very very angry, angry Esteban who was slamming his gloves in the garage, he was just not happy and apparently he was also not happy when he was talking to the press. Um, he said at the moment it is almost impossible to achieve good results, we have to look forward to the next race. And uh, if you guys want to see the whole full press release, you can see it on the Sauber F1 team website. And that is exactly what I'm going to do. This race really was one to forget, but I think Japan hopefully should be a strong one for the team. At least I am hoping, because it has been in the past. And also he was running quite strong in the race itself before he had to, of course, retire because of the power unit. In terms of Adrian Sutil, he also had to retire, he had a technical failure which the team were able to fit and then he had uh, the coming together with Sergio Perez which had an effect on his race as well and then there was a further water leak on the car which meant that they had to retire his car due to safety which uh, you know of course is a huge issue just have to you know safety is very very important in Formula 1 and of course the car they didn't want to make sure anything was further damaged on the car itself. So I'm going to highlight that reliability was the main main issue and has been the main issue for Salva in this whole season and of course I've outlined that in my previous um, videos that I've done with Salva. well we want good reliability is the, is the key of this whole season I mean even if you look at some of the other teams 
that are maybe doing well, it's probably because they have good reliability and maybe not making as many driver errors, which is also something else I want to highlight. I think driver error and reliability, and then you have, I think, a good package. Looking forward to the next race, Suzuka. It's a very high speed track. It's, it's just amazing. Love it. Very much excited for it. The season is not over yet. There are so many races that throw surprises. We've got Brazil as well, I think that's one of the most surprising of them all and it's not even the last uh, race, so I think that's going to be exciting. Let me know what you guys think as always in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Salva Motorsport and I will see you guys uh, for Russia, I believe. So I will see you guys then, take care and uh, yeah, bye!